Okay, what we're going to talk about today is how to put links on objects other than the menu. Cool thing about Muse is if you use the menu widget, then your pages all come in automatically and you can click on the menu. Um, <clears throat> but there may be, a, no, probably, if you're really doing a good design, one of the things that happens a lot in, in, in you know, modern designs is you'll see you've got the menu up top, you've got everything, and then down below you'll have like a series of, of, of pictures um, <clears throat> that lead you to specific products or specific uh, sections of the website because remember websites purpose is to sell things and that's really what you're trying to do so <clears throat> um, one of the things that you can do is have these you know just some squares and uh, I'm, I'm not going to find separate photographs we're just going to use some of the same photographs that I've used before so I might could have women's uh, and men's and children's so I'm just going to take this alt drag there we go I've got that and I can use the text tool Come on in here and just say men's, and then I can alt drag again and go in and change that to children's. And then what I can do is I can make these images and the text, I can make them link to the women's, men's, and children's clothing pages immediately. Okay? So, um, all I need to do first off is take my rectangle here and I'm going to click fill and I'm going to add an image and we're just going to get our um, uh, picture here and it's actually not great because it's off centered but there we go and uh, make sure that you choose scale to fill if that's you know what you need to do and put your positioning in there uh, and then for the men's I can do the same thing um, and uh, why I'm not adding an image what's wrong here Why can't I add an image? Well, that's a little frustrating. So I'll just, I'm not sure what's wrong with my rectangle there, but I'm not going to fight it. I'm just going to click in here, create a copy of that, fill, let's delete the image, and we'll put a new one in here, uh, which is our, this portrait of a guy that I stole off the internet here. And nice thing is positioning and scaling is all set up. Uh, I don't have a picture for, ki for kids or children, so we're just going to leave that be. But so here's how you do it. I mean, it's, it's, it's actually really simple. You click on the object that you want to, to be a link. And then right up here at the top, you have this thing called hyperlinks. And oh, it's already set. Um, so then what you're going to do is, I don't know why I can't turn it off. Um, you just click here, and then you've got a drop down. And this will list all of the pages that's, that are in your website file. So kind of cool. Um, and then you just click on it. So I want it to go to women's and there it is. So now that will go to the women's page when you know the user clicks on it. However, one thing to kind of keep in mind is you also want to make sure that you're doing the text as well. I think that a person would be rather frustrated and rightly so if they came over here and they went to the um, went to the button here and then a lot of people will try clicking on the words, okay? So don't, you know, um, mistake that. So I've already got it set here, but you can click on women's and there you go. Um, now, because I alt dragged this over, the men's is set to women's. So we're going to click here and choose men's and do the same thing here with the uh, window there. There's men's. And then also I'm going to click here and see this one doesn't have anything set up yet. So I'm going to click the drop down and I can go find the kids page. There it is, right like that and click on the text. Now, an easier way to do that, okay, let's turn that off, is also if I've got two objects where I'm going to add the same link and these two objects are always going to be together, I can right, or I can select both of them with the shift key on, then I can right click and I can hit group. Now those two objects are part of a group and now I can just add the link to the two of them at the same time and now they're both going to go to the same hyperlink and you're essentially all set. So if I preview this page, yeah, 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 <clears throat> I know that error. Okay, I can scroll down and boy, we got a problem here. Um, that's my pinning is not set correctly, um, but I can click and it's going to go to women's. Now, some of you have had this problem, 
and I did this on purpose to kind of show this issue, where you click on a link in your menu or whatever and it says page not found. I had a couple people freak out about that. The reason why that happens is because you haven't built the entire site. You only built the page. So what you need to do is instead of going preview page in browser, you're going to preview the entire site. It takes a little longer to build, but then you can start testing your buttons and now it's going to go to the women's page. Now the women's page doesn't have anything on it, so right now it's completely blank. But you can see here by the address that I'm on the right place, okay? And it says women's at the top. Um, so now to fix my pinning issues, um, <clears throat> you can see that that there and this is, are not pinned at the same place. So I'm going to click those. Then this one should be pinned to center as well as the men's. And then see if I just group them like these two. I can pin those to the right, and now they would have, uh, you know, I don't need to s select them individually because they're grouped. I'm able to do it uh, together. And so um, I can control Alt E, which is preview this whole site. Yes, it's going to give me that error again. And now you can see that they're lined up pretty well. Women's is not, but at least the links are working. I've got to figure out why women's is not working. But anyway, you can see how that works. Now, Let's say you want to go to an external site. So for instance, let's go down to our footer here. Oops, I already have it. Let's delete that. And I want to add an icon, and I want them to be able to click and go to an Instagram or a Facebook, right? So I'm just going to um, <clears throat> make myself another rectangle here, a nice square rectangle. And I can put it at the footer, or I can put it down here. It wouldn't really, doesn't really matter. Um, I'm going to fill that with an image. Uh, here's my um, square Facebook thing that I got right off of the um, internet. And I'm going to say scale to fill. Um, there we go. Actually, I could use scale to fit. Does that work? I'm about the same for this. But now, same exact thing, except in this case, obviously, Facebook is not going to be in my drop down menu, right? Because it's not actually a part of my website. So this is where you would just get the, uh, the URL, the actual address of the Facebook page. So for this, let's say this is Weisbrod Tees. So my Facebook address might be www.facebook.weisbrod t-shirts. Okay? So you can actually just type that in. So right here, HTTP, boom, boom, www.facebook.com. Okay? And then each individual page is going to have its own separate address, it would be something like slash uh, Weisbrod's t-shirts, just like that, okay? Now, that's not a real place right now, so it's not going to go anywhere, but that's what you do. And then again, if I preview this, yeah, it gives me that error, I really need to fix that. Now, if I scroll down to the bottom um, and I click on this, it goes to a Facebook error. It says, sorry, this page isn't available, but that's okay. Um, now. One of the things that you can do, and I think that this is a really great, oh, my menu is really messed up. I think this is a really good thing to do, and, and you want to you know, do this judiciously. Click, when, you, when you're setting a hyperlink to a separate website, one of the choices that you can have is do you want it to open that site in a new tab? Now, let me say this. I hate websites where whenever you click on a menu item and it's the same site, it opens a new tab. That drives me nuts. Okay? And you probably have all been on a site that does that. It's annoying. However, when I'm on a site and they say have an Instagram or a Facebook for their product, in that case, I don't mind it opening another tab because I like to stay in the website. And as a website developer, you probably don't want, um, you know, if you're, if you're building a web page and that web page's job is to sell a service or a product, you never want your clients to get out of your website by clicking on a Facebook icon. You want to keep your website open. So in that case, you check this box here which says open the link in a new window or tab. And once you click that, save and rebuild the page, once you click that, when I click the Facebook icon, 
you can see it opens a new tab. And so now I'm still in the web page here, so I haven't left the page, but I can now see whatever that company has on their Facebook page, which is kind of fun. That's really, I think that's good web design there. But don't do that for, every, for these, because it drives people nuts when you open a new tab for internal, what we call internal links, okay? But if it's an external link, then it's not such a bad idea. But again, even with external links, you know, be careful how many you have, because if people are clicking on things and every single time they click on something, it's opening new tabs, it annoys people. And when people get annoyed at your website, they don't come back, right? So you, know, you have to walk a line between being practical um, and being, um, uh, you know, uh, having a good design where you're not allowing your, um, your clients to leave your page, right? So I think that that's actually really important and that's a, that's a, you know, a consideration that all designers need to, to make. Um, also, share icons and stuff like that probably deserve to be down in the footer, not up here floating, um, but that's up to you. Some people put them up along the top. They'll have the little, little tiny icons along the top that stay sticky uh, up, in the, up in the corner so the pinning is different. Um, that's really up to you, um, you know, in, and, and how your design works. It used to be that share icons, Facebook and Instagram stuff used to always be at the top. Now I see a lot of them at the bottom. Um, and sometimes the icons are, here's a Facebook button, this is our Facebook page, and sometimes the Facebook icon is, we want you to share our page on Facebook. So, you know, those are different things and different considerations for positioning. Because um, sharing a page is actually a really great way of getting your page to rise up in the rankings on Google. So if you want your website to be higher in ranks, you want it to get a lot of shares because Google has a lot of social media marketing attached to their algorithms now, so that if your page gets shared a lot, that's a way that they're telling that people like your page, and so therefore they'll push that up in the, share rank, in the rankings on a Google search, as opposed to a page that is not shared a lot. So that's you know, something to keep in mind too. Not that that really matters for our project, because we're not actually going to be putting these out there that much, but you get the idea. Uh, does, does this all make sense? Yeah? Okay.